don't feed plants. What? Don't plants need nutrients to grow? Sure they do. Well, doesn't that mean that you should feed the plants? No, it doesn't. This is one of the really big myths in gardening. Almost everybody thinks they need to feed their plant. How many times have you seen someone on the internet ask the question, what should I feed this particular plant? What type of fertilizer should I use to feed my plants? Well, I have news for you. We don't feed plants. When we fertilize, we replace the nutrients that are missing in soil. We do not feed plants. Now that might sound like simple semantics, but it's not. It's a critical piece of information that gardeners have to know. Once you know that, you'll do a much better job growing plants and you're going to save yourself a ton of money. Now when I'm talking about fertilizer in this video, I'm including both synthetic fertilizer and organic fertilizer. So things like compost, manure, doesn't really matter. We don't use any of those things to feed plants. Now in this video, I'll explain why that's true. And then I'll go and look at some specific situations in the garden, like growing things in the ground, vegetable gardens and ornamental gardens. How are they different? What about raised beds? And then we'll look at containers and house plants. Does this apply to all those situations? To help explain this, I brought in a couple of gardeners. You might recognize them. Now, these two gardeners are very competitive, and they both grow roses, and they want to grow the best possible roses they can. So they went out and got their soil tested, and the lady found out that her soil is deficient in nitrogen. It has all the other nutrients, but not nearly enough nitrogen to grow roses. The gentleman went out and got his soil tested as well. And he's got lots of nitrogen and he's got all the other nutrients, but his soil is missing potassium. Would these two gardeners use the same fertilizer to grow roses? The answer is a resounding no. The lady needs to add nitrogen. The gentleman needs to add potassium. The reason we fertilize is to add the nutrients that are missing in soil. We do not feed plants. Plants will take the nutrients they need from the soil. A gardener's job is to make sure that soil has enough nutrients so the plants can take the nutrients they want from that soil. Now, many gardeners will use a rose fertilizer for their roses because they think they're feeding roses, but they're really doing it incorrectly. They need to replace the nutrients that are missing. And this message isn't about roses. It's about everything that we grow. Trees, shrubs, perennials, annuals, doesn't matter. In every case, we simply have to make sure the soil has the nutrients that plants need. Once you understand this, you'll approach fertilizing in a completely different way. All right, so if you're going to replace the nutrients that are missing in soil, how do you know which those are? Well, if you listen to the internet, there's lots of advice out there on how to do this. People publish these rules and these memes that tell you to look at the symptoms of the leaves, and that tells you the missing nutrients. Well, I have news for you. None of these work. Now, if you want to know more details about that and why they don't work, have a look at my blog post where I review these memes. You simply can't tell a nutrient deficiency by looking at leaves. The only way to know what's missing in your soil is to get a soil test done. Now, there are home test kits that you can buy at nurseries and garden centers, but those kits are pretty much useless. If you really want to know what's missing in your soil, you should get it done at a proper lab. Now, let's look at a couple examples. In this first example, both the manufacturers of fertilizer and governments have come together and changed the way they make the fertilizer. Forty years ago, when you went out and bought fertilizer for your lawn, it had a fairly high middle number. That's that MPK number, and the middle number is the phosphate. So everyone 40 years ago was putting lots of phosphate on their lawn, partly because they thought plants need phosphate. Grass needs phosphate to grow, doesn't it? Well, it does. But over the years, we learned that most of the soil in North America 
has enough phosphate. And if the soil has enough phosphate, there's no point in adding more. So governments came along and passed some regulations in certain states that says lawn fertilizer must have a zero as the middle number. No phosphate in that fertilizer. Still lawn fertilizer, still grows great lawns, but zero phosphate. So what happened? We didn't apply excess phosphate, so we got less phosphate pollution in lakes and rivers. People saved money because phosphate's fairly expensive. Instead of feeding the plants, we started replacing what was missing in soil. And for lawn grass, the nutrients that's usually missing is nitrogen. And that's why lots of these fertilizers have a high nitrogen number. Let's look at another case. In this case, manufacturers haven't gotten smart yet. They're still conning the general public. And this product are bloom boosters. Now, gardeners love flowers. Wouldn't you buy a fertilizer that makes more flowers and larger flowers? Well, that's what Bloom Booster is. It's special fertilizer to make lots of flowers. And if we have a look at most Bloom Boosters, they have a high mill number, lots of phosphate. But just a minute, our soil already has enough phosphate. It already grows great flowers. Adding a whole bunch of extra phosphate does not make more blooms. So why do these products exist? It's simple. Gardeners keep buying them. And if gardeners are going to keep buying them, manufacturers are going to keep supplying them. There is no reason to buy a bloom booster product unless your soil has a phosphate deficiency. Remember, we don't feed the plants. We replace nutrients in the soil. So what should you use? Well, if you've had a soil test done, then do what the soil test says. If you're low in potassium, you add potassium. If you need magnesium, you add magnesium. Follow the recommendations of the soil test. That will tell you what your soil needs. Now, I'm not recommending you go get a soil test unless you have a specific problem in the garden. And I know most gardeners aren't going to bother with a soil test, and I don't blame you. So what do you do? Well, you don't know what's missing. So what I recommend you do is grow stuff. If that stuff grows, you don't have a deficiency. Now, if your plants aren't growing well, then have your soil tested. You could have a deficiency, or you have too much of something. And that can cause plants not to grow as well. Grow stuff, if it grows well, forget the soil test and don't fertilize. If you have a problem, get your soil tested and do what it says. So let's assume you haven't done a soil test. And let's look at some specific cases. What should you do? The first one I'd like to look at is a standard garden bed. It's an ornamental bed. So you, you have some trees and shrubs, some perennials, some annuals. What should you use for fertilizer there? Well, since you don't have a deficiency, you don't know what to add, don't add anything. What I recommend you do is put on a couple inches of compost or manure. That adds a low amount of nutrients. It will help fill in anything that might be missing. Adds a bit of nitrogen. Nitrogen is almost always on the low side in a garden. And that's it. Don't fertilize. I have a six-acre garden. I grow 3,000 different things. I never fertilize any of them. I put on some wood chips as mulch, and I take organic matter from the garden and leave it in the garden. That adds a small amount of nutrients, and that's it. I don't need fertilizer. What about a vegetable garden? Well, the same rules apply for the vegetable garden, except there we generally want plants to grow quicker. And so it's a good idea to put on a little nitrogen. Again, nitrogen is one nutrient that is almost always on the low side. And that's it. Compost, manure, little nitrogen. What about raised beds? Well, that depends very much on how you built the bed. If you used real soil in them, treat them like a garden. That soil already has nutrients in it, and you almost certainly put on some compost and manure when you made that raised bed. So treat it like any other garden. Now, if you made your raised beds with a lot of organic matter, so you sort of filled them with compost, then you shouldn't put anything on them. That compost is probably too rich. And in particular, those kinds of raised beds have a problem with high toxic levels of phosphate. So grow things, and if they're growing well, don't do anything. If they're not growing well, get a soil test done, and I'll bet you you have high phosphate. Containers, what do we do there? 
Well, containers are very similar to house plants. I mean, house plants grow in containers as well. And in both cases, we generally use a soilless mix, peat moss, core, something like that. Those products don't have natural nutrients. The plants only have access to the nutrients we put into the, those containers. The other issue with containers is that we tend to water a lot because they dry out so fast and we water extra to let the water run out the bottom, and that washes nutrients away. So we can assume that in containers that have a soilless mix, we have to supply the nutrients for the plant. And what you want to add there is a synthetic fertilizer with a ratio of 3-1-2. That's suitable for virtually every kind of plant, and you want to make sure the micronutrients are in there. So a good soluble synthetic fertilizer with the micronutrients. Now, if you want to go organic, you can do that too. But just be aware that organic products take a long time to break down. And it's very likely that you're under fertilizing with organic products. Synthetic works so much better. And both synthetic and organic produce the same nutrients. By the time the plant absorbs that nutrient, can't tell the difference where it came from. So I prefer synthetic for containers. Now, if you want to learn more about soil and nutrients, I have two great sources for you. I've written a book called Soil Science for Gardeners. It's chock full of all kinds of useful information. If you're interested in more fertilizer myths, have a look at this video right here. Happy gardening.